Hi everybody, and welcome to Push Your Luck Podcast, video review number 2. In this video review, we'll be looking at the game Rukoko, which was a recent Essen release in 2013. It's being published by Agate Spieler, Pegasus Spieler, and for those in the USA, it'll be brought over by Eagle Games. In this 2-5 to five player game, which roughly lasts around 60 minutes or more, players are a family of tailors, and we'll be making dresses and suits for our customers, either to sell to them or for them to wear to the Grand Ball, which is being held by King Louis XIV. Alright, so this is a medium, light to medium weight Euro, real style game with a bit of deck building and uh, resource management as well. So, needless to say, as any Euro games are, whoever has the most points at the end of the game will win the game. So let's take a look at the components and see how the game plays. So, Rukoko is designed by three designers, all right, Matthias Kramer, Louis Maltz, and Stefan Maltz. Now together, they have created quite a few good games. Matthias has created Glenmore, Lancaster, and its expansion, including an Alphicia as well, which is quite an interesting game for those of you who have never heard of it. You might like to try it. Louis and Stefan uh, made games, uh, the Edo, all right, Edo, as well as expansion. So let's take a look at the board and the various components of this game. All right, so you see, this is a very beautif beautifully designed board. All right, there's many. Uh, it's quite artistic. There's a lot of art, a lot of color, and it really stands out among a lot of other games that you may have. All right. So, uh, but one thing to note that because it's so colorful, it could get a bit confusing as to where the various sections are. If you look at the board, all right, it's actually divided into various sections which are also meant for scoring. So if you look, there's a top section here, there's another section here, all right? There's one section here as well, and another section here. So by right, all this, um, this, wa this wall uh, are supposed to help segregate as well, okay? Uh, but because of the art, you're very attracted to all the, the colorful pictures and the various details that they put into it. I mean, you can see there's a fireplace here, and, uh, and all these sim symbols are quite important as well. So the symbols could get lost in the arts, or the wonderful arts. Okay, but after a few plays, you should be able to to see, uh, to be able to understand the game and be able to see where the various parts of the game board are. Alright, so let's take a look at the other components. You can see that um, these are the various cards, tailor cards that you can hire which will add to your deck. Did I mention that this was a deck building game as well? So th these cards will be the one that will add to your deck and help you to uh, either create a better deck or uh, give you more powers during the game. These will be the, well you can think of them as the ingredients to make dresses. All right, So these are the various color cloths as well as the, um, the, the gray cube and the white cube which are lace and yarn. So the white is lace, the gray is yarn. Alright, but throughout the game we just call them the gray, uh, the gray cylindrical cylindrical disc and the white cube makes it easier anyway. Okay, so in uh, these are for end, for end game scoring as well, and these are where the main gist of the game comes in, which is the dresses that you can make, the dresses or the suits that you can make for your customers. Alright, so you can see that uh, this row this is like the market row. Alright, so uh, after every round. If there are extra uh, pieces that are still not yet sold, they'll be pushed away. So the, this one will be pushed away. Depending on the number of players, okay, this is a 4-5 to five player board. The other side will be the 2-3 to three player board. Okay, I can't really see the differences now, but I'm quite sure they are, or else they wouldn't produce two boards, right? So, in this game, uh, for this particular dress, a uh, suit for example, right, you will need two green cloths, which you can get from here, alright? which you need to turn in from there, and then you'll be able to sell it for six, $6 all right, or, or get two points at the end of the game. Now some, some uh, dresses will have, uh, uh, for example this one has a lace requirement. There are also some dresses which I will show you later on that requires a special type of um, tailor to be able to make it. This is your uh, typical, um, this is your player, player starting hand of cards that you have. All right? as well as a, a player board which kind of tells you what the actions are as well as where you should put your uh, draw deck and discard pile so you do not get confused. So during the game you need to make sure that people are not confused about this. 
So how do you play the game? At the start of every round, you replenish this uh, this market area. All right. So old dresses they are not yet uh, bought, okay, or, or made will be will be thrown away. Then there'll be a new set of uh, dresses come in. All right. This will be this whole stack will be replenished. Okay. Whoever took this card, which is the favor for the queen, will need to return it as well. And all this will be replenished as well. Okay. So. In, in player order, uh, depending on the previous turn order, so whoever had this queen favor card, right, will determine the next starting player. Okay, whoever is the next starting player will play action. So players would have already had three cards in their hand. Okay, if they have any in a draw deck, they can choose three cards from here. Okay, if there's uh, the, if the draw deck is does not allow you to have three cards, all right, you can choose. Uh, the remaining cards from the discard pile, okay, and then form your three cards in hand. Okay, so starting each player will be playing uh, one card during their turn, and using the card when they play the card down, they will be able to do two actions. Usually two actions. All right, the first action will be any one of these listed on the board. The second action will be the character action uh, action itself if it has any. For example, this one allows you to make a purchase from the market to get cloth, uh, lace, or yarn. Okay, this one will not have anything associated with it. These sections are explained to them. Okay, this means that you will want to go to the queen card right, to get favor, which means that you'll be the next starting player as well as you'll get a, a reward, five five dollars as a reward. Now, throughout the game you see little symbols like these, which means that when you play a card to you want to do this action, you cannot play cards which has this this uh, lousier timbre on it. So you can see each of the player cards have a timbre. So for example, you cannot play you cannot play this, all right, to go to the queen to get a favor from the queen, all right. So you need you need uh usually the, the higher higher end uh, tailors to be able to go go to go to the queen and get favors. Next, you can do you can go to the market, all right. So you can go to the market and get resources here. So how do you get resources? It depends on which row you're getting the, the tile from as well as how many of the tiles are there remaining on that row. So for example, if there's four tiles remaining or three tiles remaining and you're going to take a piece from here, you need to pay $2. If there's only uh, two tiles left or even two tiles left, you only pay one. If it's one or less, you, you get it for free. Okay, so timing is critical. At the same time, you don't want to be too late because you may miss out the the nice uh nice materials that you have, right? Nice for example, this one has three, so it can probably help you to uh, make more intricate dresses, all right, or suits. While at the same time, you don't want, you need to make sure you got enough money to be able to go there and buy. Okay, the next section, all right, this is to make a dress. So you take one of these pieces, all right, and you can make a dress. So you need to. Cater, make sure you ha can have like, enough materials. Turn in the material tiles for the, the dress. For some of this one needs two. All right. uh, you do not get any change back. Huh? Please take note. If, for example, you pay extra, you do not get any change back. All right. If you happen to take this piece, which is uh, not the zero, all right, you need to pay the amount of dollars above it as well. Okay. Take note, only some uh, tailors can make dress. I think this is the lowest class tailor and he cannot make dresses. Okay, so after you make a dress, right, you can decide where uh, what you do with the dress. You can either sell it for money, okay, or you can place it anywhere on the board. Now, on a, if you look at the board, there are quite a lot of uh, slots here where you can place your the, the piece that you just made. Okay, for example, after you you chosen a slot, all right, then you put it here and you put your this on it to symbolize that this was made by you. Okay, so why are there many many different uh, Different type of symbols on the board. Okay, this, these will tell you that they re when they require the the master tailor to make the dress, and then you can put you can put it here. All right, only if it's a master tailor that made a dress. Okay, master tailors are are these these guys with the with the golden thimble. Okay, there are some symbols like these, which will mean that when you put it there, you merely can get this as a benefit. So this allows you to take one piece. Uh, one piece of material from the materials board. Okay, this will give you five coins. 
all right, and so on and so forth. So what is the significance of this? I'll explain this later. Okay. Next, uh, this allows you to fight. This allows you to hire someone. All right. On the side of the board, all right, where I mentioned previously, there's a uh, there's four cards. Every round, there's always be four cards, four new cards for you to hire people. So uh, only the 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 master tailor, which is this one, all right, can go and hire people. You cannot send anyone else. All right. So in this, if it's a four cards uh, remaining on the board, you need to pay five dollars. Three cards, uh, three dollars. Two cards, one dollar. And if you have one card left, you get it for free. So you get this person and you immediately add it into your hand. When what does it mean to you? It means that you now have an extra action which to play for that round. Immediately it comes into play. Okay, the bad thing would be that it may clog up your deck, which means that you can take some time uh before the discard pile uh before the draw pile run, runs empty and then you can take all the discard pile and shuffle it into the draw uh, put it back into the draw pile and then you can choose three from them, which means that a potentially good cards may not be available to you for several rounds okay this action is to fire the person so to you can, the the card that you played to activate this action that person is fired but not before that you can do the action associated with that character as well as you get a certain amount of money for firing the person so this is a uh, this is essentially for you to trim your deck okay uh last but uh you can also Put uh, your one as in contribute to a decoration. So what happens is that if you see on the board there are many many symbols with decorations. All right, so all these will score you points at the end of the game. This means points at the end of the game. Uh, sorry, this means points at the end of the game. All right, this means the money you need to spend to put this there. So if I want to put a this, all right here, I need to spend seventeen dollars and I put it there. It means that I'll, I'm assured four points at the end of the game. Okay. Uh, so once all once we have all played. Our actions that all of us have passed, all right. The round ends. We get income based on this, okay. We get a base of five five dollars income plus. If you have any disc here, you'll be able to get uh, one more per disc that you have on decoration, including itself. If you have a disc here, it will mean that you also get one more for each dress you have in the board. Okay, that there'll be an income per round. All right. So the game will continue after seven rounds. All right, there'll be uh, end game scoring. There's also end game cards here which you can purchase, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game will win the game. So there are some details that I did not explain. Uh, for example, if you are the first to make a dress in each of the five different areas, you'll be able to put a disc here. If this disc is occupied, you will need to put this here and so on and so forth. So it means you are first to do it, you can get eight points, then five points, and then two points. Okay. Uh, if, if for the for the queen, if you're the if when the game ends and you hold on to the queen, that means you're a start player, all right. You also get three more points, all right. Uh, this is a very special track, all right. This is a decoration track. It's like a it's like the patio, so you are invited to the rooftop to enjoy the the fireworks. So if you have a if you have a piece if you have a piece of clothing here, all right. So I'll put this this here, all right. And then you have one here as well. So what you can do after you have scored for this row, you can move your piece up here, which means that now, uh, whatever points you have here is double, depending on where you are. Okay, so there's double, triple, and uh, triple, double and triple. All right. So um, the address, the addresses usually range from two points to I think five points. Okay. So if you do this, you can get even more points. Each row will also have an end game scoring. So if you look at a row, whichever has a majority of dresses there will get seven points, second most will get three. If there's a tie, you'll be looking at which of the tight players' dresses are in in this golden uh, border area. Alright. So that's quite it's important for tiebreakers. Uh this will also this will also give you end game scoring as well. Alright. If you're if you're uh, as long as you have a disc here. For each set of this, you get two plus two plus two plus two eight points. So each set, each complete set, you get eight points. Otherwise, you uh, reduce depends on which particular color you do not have. Okay, if you have two, then you need to choose another set and get another eight, eight points and so on and so forth. Okay, and so that is the gist of the game. All right, you'll be uh, you'll be trying to uh, build a deck that gives you enough capabilities for you during the game so that uh, you can. 
be able to get the right resources, make the right dress, choosing when to sell the dress for money to, so that you can get enough money to pay for decorations around the board and also score your points as well. So it is a game that has a lot of points scoring all right, uh, and you need to be quite aware of how to go about doing this. Let's hear our final thoughts. And so that's the video review, all right, and of the uh, overview of the game Rukoko. All right, uh, it, I think it is available on quite a lot of European sites right now, but it's still making its way to USA. So uh, for those in the USA, you have to be a bit patient. Uh, this is a Essen copy that I've gotten from my friend, uh, from Jonathan actually, who went to Essen and bought a copy. So um, the gameplay is uh, is pretty it's pretty smooth, easy to I think it's easy to teach easy to learn. Uh, it has a bit of depth to it, uh, especially because of the deck building part. It adds a lot of um, weight, uh, a lot of thinky parts to the game. Uh, I like the deck building mechanism actually, even though uh, Dominion has come out as uh, the deck builder king and so on and so forth, but uh, there seems to be a resurgence of deck building in, in quite a lot of Euro style games. For example, I just played uh, Lewis and Clark, which also has a deck building element to it. So it, it seems as if this is a deck building uh, version 2 right now, where uh, Eurostyle games are incorporating uh, this deck building element into their games. And it flows quite smoothly. It doesn't seem as if it's a, a disconnect of mechanisms, which is, uh, which is quite a surprise to me. The deck building element, uh, the, has the discarding of the cards for the deck building element is also quite good, because uh, you can get rid of cards that you do not want. You need to make sure that you do that as well because you need to uh, manage the good cards that you want back into your draw deck so you can choose them again for the subsequent rounds. You don't want to be bogged down by uh, ineffective cards which will not, which will uh, stop you from getting the right cards that you want. Um, there's a lot of player interaction in the game uh, because you'll be blocking each other uh, from the dresses that you want to buy, the materials that you want, the cards the characters are on the higher, as well as the slots on the board as well. So there's quite a quite a fair bit of interaction. Uh, I'm not sure how it will be for for fewer players for two because the first game you played was five, and uh, there was quite a fair bit of interaction going along. There seems to be only two main ways of scoring: either you go by the dress route, you make a dress making or the suit making route, or you go by the the decorations route. All right. Uh, I I guess uh the best. Strategy will be a, a combination of the both. Right, you have some in the decorations, some in the the dresses. You should not ignore the, the patio area, which can double, sometimes even triple the points you get for the dresses. So that can be quite a huge benefit. So this is a game review that uh, my friend requested. All right, uh, if you want us to review any games out there, all right, do feel free to leave us comments on this video track, or better still, join our guild on Board Game Geek. Uh, we have a guild there. You can leave us feedbacks, comments, uh, especially to our, for our podcast. Right? So we have a podcast on iTunes, push it up podcast, dot, uh, push it up podcast. You can also go to our blog at pushitupodcast.com. We are also now a proud member of the Dice Tower Network, where there are many, uh, many other podcasts, uh, wonderful podcasts you can listen to. But of course, do listen to ours. Ours is still the best. <laughs> so uh, do listen to our podcast, leave us uh, comments. We recently released episode 24 of Push Your Luck Podcast where we talk to uh, Michael Fox of the Little Metal Dog Show and we talk about uh, Michael's and Jonathan's Essen impressions and also what do they feel currently is their Essen game, uh, game of the Essen convention. All right, so uh, yes, please feel free to leave us comments and feedback. I'd like to hear whether you think uh, this format is better. All right, uh, in the, I do hope to be able to produce a type of video a quality similar to uh, Elton Brown's Good Eats at Food Network. But I think I'm still quite a fair bit away. But we'll see. We'll never know. Alright, so thank you.